The article I'm sharing with you today is titled Devoted Boyfriend's Attitude Changes During House Purchase. It discusses four key points in understanding people and reveals the true psychology of men. Let's listen together. I came across a post seeking help. The poster's boyfriend has no house, no car, and no money, but he treats her exceptionally well. So she willingly agreed to buy a house together, each paying half of the down payment. Hers came from her own savings, while his was borrowed money. She didn't ask for any dowry from him, as she already has a car of her own. She joked about putting only her name on the marriage certificate, saying, after all, you belong to me, but he firmly refused, saying the money he used was borrowed from his sister, who insisted that both names be on the property deed. He claimed to care about his sister's feelings. In that moment, I felt like this guy who always treated me like his life was suddenly a stranger. Would marrying him really lead to happiness? Generally, women's incomes tend to be lower than men's, so if you, as a girl, can save up half of the down payment before marriage, while he can't, there must be a reason. Usually, there are several reasons why a man has no money before marriage. Firstly, he may lack ability or have a bad attitude, making it hard to find a job and earn an income. If that's the case, my advice is to run as far as you can. Marrying a man who lacks ambition is akin to slow suicide. He will suffocate all your passion and happiness. Secondly, there might be a mismatch between income and spending ability. Nowadays, many young people have problematic spending habits, living beyond their means. Men like these lack life planning and responsibility. The third reason could be a poor family background that burdens him. Some children are born to fill the gaps in their parents' lives and can't live for themselves. They start bearing the burden for their family from the first day they become independent. Despite their unwillingness, they can't cut off the ties of blood. These men are not necessarily bad, they're just unfortunate. The second key point is that he borrowed the down payment from his sister. It's normal for siblings to help each other, but you need to understand why he had to borrow from his sister instead of receiving support from his parents. This relates to his family structure and the third point mentioned earlier. Apparently, he couldn't afford the down payment but it's unlikely due to family burdens. If his sister is willing to lend half of the down payment, it suggests two things she's wealthy and perhaps a bit controlling. So if his family background is truly bad, it's his sister who's footing the bill, not him. However, his sister's ability to lend him half the down payment suggests that family burdens are either non-existent or limited. This raises questions about why he couldn't afford the down payment now let's talk about his family structure. Having a wealthy older sister is good, but everything has its price. For example, when buying a house, you have to borrow half the down payment from your sister. Will you naturally feel inferior when dealing with her in the future? Generally, I don't recommend getting too involved financially with in-laws. Economic entanglements can lead to complications, whether it's lending money to or borrowing from them. If his sister has requirements for lending him money, such as putting his name on the property deed, it's understandable from her perspective, but you should ask yourself if you can tolerate her interference in your marriage. Marriage is narrow, it can't accommodate not only third parties, but also others giving unsolicited advice. Couples must communicate and negotiate on their own. The third key point is whether it was his sister's idea or his own to include both names on the property deed. When the girl jokingly suggested putting only her name, he immediately refused. From the girl's initial description, she seemed confident that he would agree, especially since it was his own borrowed money. But he rejected her, which didn't match her expectations and made her doubt his love. I don't agree with using property or money to test someone. Most of the time, it doesn't end well. If you genuinely want only your name on the property deed, communicate your reasons clearly and see if you can convince him. There's no need for joking tests. The fourth key point is when the girl mentioned, he treats me exceptionally well. Many women talk about their emotional issues, 
starting with he treats me exceptionally well then listing examples where he's not actually that good to them. Sometimes, I wonder if this is a common occurrence. Two important factors determine a man's goodness towards a woman whether he genuinely treats her well or whether she's unable to discern between genuine and fake kindness. Many girls mistake sweet talk and minor gestures as true love, so it's important to be objective in relationships and not deceive oneself, as it's ultimately oneself who will suffer. We must understand one thing if a man has no house, no money, and no car, and he can't even treat you well, would you still be with him? When men are destitute, they often treat women well because they want to hold on to the last straw. It's essential to judge based on his character, whether he's naturally honest or pretending. This is crucial. Some say understanding people is difficult, but it's actually not. Approach relationships with care and understanding rather than relying solely on words. If problems arise, calmly analyze and solve them, and there won't be significant issues. That's all for this article. If you found it helpful, please like it. Feel free to leave a comment and share your thoughts. Time flies, it's been almost half a year together. Many friends have become better people with our companionship. To our new friends, welcome. If you feel the road ahead is tough, remember, you're climbing uphill. I hope you gain new insights every day. You're never alone here.